the wheels are starting to come off the Leviathan release. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and uh, this is going to be a bit of a wild video, I feel like. So, um, it isn't quite the way I wanted this video to go, and a lot of things have happened, much like they did with the Dominion box set, strangely enough. Um, so let's let's get into it now. If you're here for the unboxing build of Leviathan, which I super appreciate, by the way, and I got a lot of things to say about the actual product itself, um, because you know at face value, there's there's a lot of good things to be said about this product, and I really want to get into it. I want to do we're going to do a pricing breakdown. We're gonna do we're gonna talk about the sprues and how GW will most likely put this at the path to market it's going to take for all this stuff through the next three year cycle as we get into 11th edition, right? And, but I did want to say that probably this early, this early tidbits, if you're not really into the, the, Hey, this is what's going on with GW. This is how retailers are getting screwed over and what's happening and the word on the street, you know, skip ahead to that. We got all the, you know, the, the timestamps in there and you can just jump ahead and, and go over there and that, that's fine. And we'll probably cut this out and make this a separate video as well. Um, for later on in, in, in the weekend and things, because I think it's important that people see what's happening with, with, you know, retailers and things. And remember, I don't get, we don't get anything from Games Workshop. We never have uh, to, to, to create content with, right? We are completely independent when it comes to dealing with Games Workshop just because of the fact that we can say whatever we want. And we're one of the very few people out there that actually do it and hold them to account for a number of things that they do that you're not going to hear from other platforms. And I think that's very important because as a former retailer myself, um, I do know the games they play and I do know what they do to retailers. And it's very difficult to stand by on my channel and not mention these things to people because a lot of retailers, and I'm sure everybody out there knows and have dealt with a lot of these folks, they pour their heart and their soul and maybe all their life savings, or maybe they just don't take a job and don't create a life savings because they are so passionate about this hobby and providing for their community, for the community and getting folks those, those, those items and things. And since roughly February, they haven't been able to do that. Everything's been allocated. It's been a terrible time for retailers. It's a very slow economic time out there, especially right now in this in this early June time period. Things are very slow for a lot of retailers. And it's no make no mistake, that is why so many people are coming out with so many releases this month because it's the summer blockbuster season. That's why restaurants have their two for one deals and things like that during the summer because people are out doing stuff. The last thing they're thinking about is toy soldiers. So it's very important and you see it getting even worse as we get closer to back to school time because not only are people not out doing stuff, but they're buying things for back to school. And that's when retailers start going out of business. That is the number one period for retailers to fail in the hobby well in general too. But um, that's that's when it happens. That's what happens, August and September. So you know we're, we're closing in on that fast and retailers really need a big help this year, this right now, this month, well, this year in general. Um, because it's to have all that play space and have all all that GW merch on the shelf and not be able to get the things they need is a problem. Now let's let's fast forward to what's happening right now. You've probably heard, hey Leviathan, we've got it. We got we got it. No caps. Everything's good, guys. Everything's good. All right. Well, here's here's what's actually happening. Um, retailers got calls, got an email at roughly 8 a.m. Monday morning here in the States. And they're like, hey, we're going to be calling you to get pre-order numbers. No no idea what the price point was for the box. No, nothing. Just, we're going to call you sometime, answer your fucking phone before Wednesday or else you're not getting anything. So a lot of retailers did and they got great numbers. GW seemed to have a really good system in place for, uh, but you would, you basically sell this much stuff. So we think you want this many Leviathans. Okay, cool. And you only get this many of the, the freebies, the little dice tray and the extra um, deployment zone markers. Not cool, but okay, we'll take it. You know, like what's the point of you're giving me, say, 100 boxes if I can only get 15 of the deployment, deployment zone tokens? All right, whatever. I'll overlook it. I'm, I'm about to make some money on this 100 Leviathans over here. It's great. Thank you. Finally, thank you. All right, cool. So day two comes around, Tuesday, right? 
and they get they go further down their list they're calling people they're like we think you want this many and some retailers are like nah i don't really want that many and then you know put it back in the pool and they kicked it out on some you know their other retailers and they you know each of the trade sales reps or each of the reps uh do their own thing and you know they, they hook up who they can right and that's great that's a great idea you know because uh, bigger stores have bigger needs that just goes without saying right Come around to Wednesday and, you know, there's there's starting to, starting to be rumblings of, hey, there might actually be allocations starting to hear that they only produce 75,000 to seven or 72 to 75,000 of these. Whereas the horse heresy box, they produce roughly 100,000 of these, which is a lot. It's, it's a lot of units. You know, we talk about this all the time that if, you know, you can't judge how many how much products sell by how many views videos get out there, right? So at the top of the food chain, the top of the, the Warhammer gaming food chain pyramid on YouTube is roughly Squidmar, right? Like it goes without saying, his videos crush it numbers wise, right? So, but imagine like he gets a video that gets right off the bat, first 24 hours, 200,000, right? Is there really 200,000 hobbyists out there actually buying product? And the answer is no, absolutely no, because GW would make way more than 100,000 units of anything. Hell, all of these uh, hobby companies, Army Painter, Vallejo, um, any tool, any, anybody making tools, anything you see in stores would make way more units to sell to stores. That's just a fact. So there's a lot of folks that watch this content that aren't necessarily hobbyists. And God bless, you know, thank you for watching this stuff, whoever you are, um, former, you know, hobbyists, or maybe just people just interested in the hobby in general, or maybe it just comes up on their thing and they watch it, right? So that, for for GW to print 100,000, allegedly, a horse heresy boxes, and then cut it back to 75, to 72 to 75,000 of Leviathan is kind of, it kind of doesn't make sense to me because you know, 40K is more popular than horse heresy, right? But maybe they were like, ah, you know, wet feet, you know, we're having a hard time moving stuff, you know, stuff's going to you know, liquidators, it's getting found in dumps, you know, it's rotting on the pallets behind Nottingham, you know, we talked about that, right? So, okay, cool. Then you start to potentially run out. And that's what's happening right now into the later days of the week on uh, pre-order week for uh, Leviathan is retailers are getting a call and they're like, yo dog, you get two. And they're just like, the fuck am I supposed to do with two? And they're like, well, if we didn't allocate it, you'd be getting zero. Furthermore, not only that, but they are reaching back into the pot of people that they have already confirmed numbers with that have not been invoiced yet. And allegedly, and I've heard this, people have already reported in direct messages. They've sent me the email screenshots and things as a lot of retailers do because they understand I'm on their side as a former retailer here in the States. They're like, yo, they literally just reallocated me. I already pre-sold the number they told me. They said, yep, no caps, we're good. They pre-sold that number and now they're like, I ain't getting that many. And you know what kind of an issue that causes? It's a feel badsy for customers. It's a feel badsy for that retailer that was finally like, I got the home run I needed after five months, after five months of pulling that football out from underneath me when I went to go kick it, after five months of eating ramen noodles because I couldn't get enough product to sell to feed myself or feed my staff, I finally get a home run. And nope, GW's taking it back. Dude, I cannot tell you as a person in this hobby how frustrating that is. And furthermore, not only that, but these folks are super frustrated at content creators who all, seemingly hundreds of them, got these boxes for free from Games Workshop and are out there just like, oh, everything's great. You know, and I want to touch on that too, because that's a, that's a different subject that I feel like, you know, these, these retailers and poten potentially folks like you watching at home or on your phones uh, might be upset at them. And I, I would just stop and say, you should not be upset with them. You should not be upset. And this is, this is just my opinion. I don't feel like you should be upset with anyone, whether a big or small content creator, channel, uh, platform, whatever, because they were approached by Games Workshop to shill for them, right? They either have a job to do, a family to feed, a side hustle to get, uh, to pay for their hobby, and they were put in a position by Games Workshop. And I don't feel like we should be mad at them for trying to better themselves and their channel and their side hustle and their families. I think the problem is Games Workshop, y'all. Straight up.
The problem is Games Workshop. And this is why we don't take things from Games Workshop. So we can make these type of videos and talk about these things because it's important and it's happening out there and it's happening more and more with more and more companies. And whether it's, you know, video game companies and we can talk about that for a while or other other card or uh, trading card companies, which we could talk about that for a while. But that's not the purview of this of this thing. I have been a, in the, re, the tabletop wargaming or tabletop hobby retail uh, space for nearly 30 years. Um, I would argue it has been 30 years at this point. I've had I've had jobs when I was much younger at game stores. Um, so, you know, I've pretty much been in I've, I've had skin in the game for three decades now. Um, I understand in a lot of cases how it works, you know, how these, these folks put their lives on hold. They put, you know, they sink a lot of money into these businesses and, you know, I get it. I get it. And I get it as a hobbyist too, because I love this stuff and I love, I love painting these miniatures that you see behind us. You know, this is a lifetime's collection of miniatures of my own. And I'm very fortunate to have a lot of pieces from, re, uh, from, uh, studios and folks out there that are very talented artists that might still be around, might still not be around. And this is a very important collection to me. You know, some of the very first stuff I airbrushed, uh, those, those huge Titans up there for Eldar, you know, 10, 12 years ago, I learned from Kenny Boucher from Next Level Painting that you probably never even heard of 10, 12 years ago, but I did. And, and he took the time to teach me how to, how to do all this stuff. And look at them now, you know, it's a, it's an amazing story. But I think at the end of the day, we should not be upset with content creators um, because of them trying to better themselves. So just, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like I get it, I get the easy hate, but I don't think that's the right place to be. I think the problem is Games Workshop and what they're doing and how they're just making it easy for scalpers and for the prices of this stuff to just go through the roof for no other reason besides they're just, I just don't get their logistics. I just don't get what is going on there, right? So now let's talk about the price. So we all know that at this point, uh, the price of the Leviathan box is 150 pounds, Great Britain pounds, right? And we knew this at, at Warhammer Fest because it was part of the terms and conditions of, of their giveaway, right? So let me let me talk, and I've talked in this channel a lot about Games Workshop's arbitrage. So 150 Great Britain pounds is not, you know, when you convert it out. Oh, I guess I could just do it right here and convert it out real quick. So let's just, let's just take a look. So um, uh, 150 GBP to uh, USD and get okay. So that's 186.47. So obviously, you know, there's going to be folks out there that say. Um, that, that say, hey, there's transportation costs coming across, across the ocean, putting it in store, you know, destroying it, um, distributing it rather, uh, getting it off the dock, fees, fees, you know, in, in, you know, costs and things like that. And OK, I get that. I get that. But any other, you know, a lot of a lot of other companies out there, it's there is an arbitrage between the pricing of things. Right. So. You can go to any other, for the most part, game manufacturer, tabletop war gaming manufacturer, and you can just go through the little the little dial on their site and check out what things are in different currencies. And it it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. It's generally pretty close within like five bucks because of transaction fees, which you can't really get around. But for this particular box to be two hundred and fifty dollars US, seventy dollars more, roughly seems a little exorbitant multiply that by 75,000 which they probably didn't all come to here I would say about 60% of them come to the states but they're about 50 60 the states are about 50 60% of the uh, of games workshops business right so you can you can extrapolate that number out I'm not going to bore you with the details but I'm sure it's a lot of money right so it gets even worse. So GW has this like arbitrage thing that they do, right? They they have some number and they're like, well, this many, you know, this many dollars is this many dollars, right? And, and or this many Great Baron pounds is this many US dollars. And that, that I get it. Like, that's cool. You do your thing. That's fine. Um, but you can usually figure out what that exchange rate is, that arbitrage rate, by going to the site and finding something in the GBP price and then converting it to US dollars, which I'm about to show you. And this is how I forecast a lot of pricing and things when I don't have access to, oh, for some reason their site's like super wonky right now. Let me see if I can get it to work. There we go. So we'll switch it to US. Huh. 
Look at that. Would you look at that? It says $230, which is exactly why I said, hey, the price of Leviathan is probably going to be $230 because when I saw it on 150 for the past five, six years, every time I knew the Great Britain, Great Britain price, I would be able to convert it doing something like this on either Forge World site or Games Workshop site to get the US dollar price. And even furthermore, $230 was or is the new price of Battle Forces and starter sets from Games Workshop since the February 2023 price increase. So it made 100% sense that it this box set would be $230. But yet, here we are in June, and this box set is $250. For seemingly no fucking reason, straight up, besides greed. I'm not gonna pull a punch, there's no other reason for this. Yeah, they're going to spend some money to get it over here, right? But here's the thing too. And let's talk about this for a second. If I can switch between <laughs> the correct <laughs> correct screens. Let's talk about this for a second. The former manager of Games Workshop North America directly said to me, bragged to me, as a matter of fact, that in 2005, they landed uh, the Battle for McCrag box set in Memphis, Tennessee, the warehouse from China. The whole box was made in China. Uh, they landed that box, landed in the warehouse, cost done, ready to send out to retailers uh, well over 15 years ago for roughly $6 a unit. It was 5 or $6, 5 and change, $6 a unit. At the time, that was a $50 starter box. $50, right? Bragging about how much that is. Now you can extrapolate that cost. Now, obviously costs have gone up in 2023 because of world stuff, but you can extrapolate like, yo, that's only like 10% of the retail price. You're making like 90% profit. Now granted, yes, they have to pay for all the staff. They have to pay for all the boxes. They have to pay for all the research and all the 18 months of developing things and the cats that come over to jump in the boxes when you're trying to record. But you know how it goes. She's going to make noise. I apologize. Um, but that's an exorbitant amount of money. Now, now think about that for a minute. There, that is their margin landed. The margin for getting this shit from Great Britain to America to the Memphis warehouse is already built in the price, y'all. There is no reason to go from 150 pounds to 250 US besides greed. They are making additional margin off the arbitrage. That's exactly what they are doing. There is, if you can convince me of a different argument of why that exists, besides the fact to artificially inflate their sales, please leave a comment. Cause I am, I am, I'm no macroeconomist, but I don't see any other reason when every other retailer sells it for the same thing, minus a little bit of a conversion fee on their sites. We've talked about this for a long time and it's even more, it seems like even more higher greed right now when you, when you can literally go back and look at this and this was exactly correct for the last five or six years, every time I've done it. But for this, for this reason, sometimes it's for some reason it's $250. So, all right, cool, fine, whatever. Get your 250. If you can get it to stores, stores can make money. Everybody's happy. There's cool minis in here. That's great. But please understand where I'm coming from, from a business standpoint. When I ask you to vote for your hobby dollars, because is it worth spending them directly with Games Workshop or worth spending them at your local game store, assuming you like your local game store, or with a retailer you care about, you know, an online retailer you care about, because obviously they're independent, they have families to feed, they have staff, et cetera, et cetera. Is it worth spending the money there to benefit them and grow their communities, and their hobby, and their ability to provide for you? Or is it worth spending directly with Games Workshop who does shit like this? Okay, so that is the the doom and gloom, I guess, part of uh, part of this particular video. Um, if you're watching this, and you're like, yo, this video is about to be over. Well, jump over to our video, actual unboxing, so we can talk more about the dope ass minis in this box. 
and what I think of them and, you know, what we're at path to market and things I think I think it's going to take. Um, if you're currently in this video and there's like another half an hour less, well, well, hey, scroll, scroll to the part you want to see. And I uh, super appreciate you you watching this uh, this video. This is, like I said, this is a little outro. They will probably drop the first half as a separate video um, pretty soon as well. So let's uh, let's take a look at the actual box set itself. Uh, I may have uh, may have lied a bit. Uh, <laughs> I feel like before we look at the box set, we need to talk about value real quick. And that uh, we we actually put out a uh, which I think is a really good um, value article on uh, exactly what we think Leviathan will be worth. Um, now a lot of people have already pre-ordered or are pre-ordering, breaking apart the box sets and selling them on eBay. So we have a little bit of an idea of what people seem to think that they're that they're going to go for and they're going to pay for. But I do want to mention, you know, some of the past to market and things like this is something that we saw in the past with Indominus, where they would put out um, additional product or the sprues that were containing characters and sprues or in characters and squads. Um, as a separate release for arbitrary prices, right? So when Indominus came out, it was one ninety nine. Now this new box, Leviathan, is two fifty. So it basically went up twenty five percent in a time where inflation probably wasn't twenty five percent. It's only been three years, right? Twenty twenty to twenty twenty three. Just for for an instance, the honor to the chapter uh, box right here, or sprue, or kit. Well, they called it a kit, but it's just basically one of the sprues out of Indominus went for one hundred and sixty dollars. So if you're a newer hobbyist before, you know, after Indominus, you wouldn't know this. You'd be like, "Yo, I need those minis, cool," and you get the sprue in the mail, right? From from GW. Same thing with the Necron Royal Court. Those, you know, those those models pictured. Um, that is just one of the sprues out of Indominus, which again went for two hundred dollars. So just those two sprues selling them separately went for more than the actual you know retail price of uh indominus and this was later on after that all of that had a release like late i, I want to say it was uh, late 2021 or early 2022 i forget exactly right um and then we start talking about the the price for the box and things obviously there's a bunch of miniatures in here it has more miniatures than indominus did it's got 72 miniatures so about 10 more i believe um, which is, is a great deal. Now, here's where we kind of break into the value. And value is obviously, you know, uh, fluctuates based on what someone will pay for. It. Now, these are our rough guesses at what the comparison to the multi-part kit will be, which we don't exactly know. Um, like we saw with Indominus, we saw a lot of the, the kits that would be coming out for the Necron side at, at launch. Um, but we don't really know because they're doing this global campaign where they're like, hey, uh, whoever wins the global campaign uh, will preview your stuff first. That's coming, you know, new releases that are coming. And in a lot of cases, as we saw with Indominus, they would release the easy to build sprues from Indominus as the multi or as the separate kits later on. Like we saw it with the Necron Warriors and the Outriders. I believe the only way to get the Assault Intercessors for um, a small period of time until Blood Angels were released was from this box. Although they did put out multi-part Assault Intercessors later on. The only way to get them if you wanted was the, was the multi-part kit. Uh, Eradicators were hugely popular. And while they did have eventually have a multi-part kit come out, uh, those promptly sold out. So the, the, the star of Indominus was the um, Eradicators with their Meltas because everybody was taking those. Um, so sometimes you see stuff go for even go for a premium, even if it is easy to build and there is a multi-part kit out there, right? So this is just kind of a middle of road price. And I honestly think uh, secondary market wise, they're all going to go for about the same uh, kind of bracket uh, grouping of price, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But I mean, you can make the argument that any of these um, characters, you know, are going to be a certain price and any of these squads are going to be a certain price just because they read or release stuff so many times or they'll release it as a separate release um and that's all it gets there is no multi multi-part version of it so here you can see kind of the the prices that we put on things here like some of the special characters at 40 um the stern guard at four at 60 and i think that's going to be pretty close to the mark to be quite honest that they're going to go for the same with the uh terminators i suppose the inferno squad depending on how good they are in game um once the meta develops we'll you know we'll start to see that um 
depending. Uh, the Dreadnought, you know, $75 for the Redemptor Dreadnoughts. Uh, will this go for $75? It could. It could. Um, just depending on how good it is in, in the meta, so to speak. So, But I could realistically see it going for a different price that we're going to talk about here uh, shortly. So estimated value, $420. That could be a maximum. I, I think it's a good, solid maximum. Same with Tyranids here. Very, very similar in pricing, which you can kind of see on the screen there. Screamer Killer, 60. Neuro Tyrant, 60. Neuro Gaunts, 45. I would strongly suspect those are going to be the separate kit release later. The Tyranid Prime at 45. The Leapers at 60, based on the, you know, the Squad of Warriors. Um, I strongly suspect that'll be the way they release that squad later on. Termagants as well. Um, Forty dollars seems like a lot for them, but the Gene Stealers are now forty dollars, um, and I think that is an increase of the Termagant price as well. Barb Gaunts, uh, depending on how effective they are, really hard to say at this point. Um, Psychophage, I think sixty based on the Turbogon as well. So th I think this is a good solid maximum here, which you know gets you somewhere around uh, eight hundred ninety dollars plus the rulebook is obviously going to be sixty dollars all day on the shelf. Now is it worth sixty dollars when you buy it secondary? Uh, it's probably going to be less. So that gets you a really really solid maximum value here of you know like way up there, right? Per per person, you're you're really crushing it. Um, you know that's just without the rule book, you know, it's, it's really looking really good. Now, uh, that's, the that value seems high, right? It, it is probably a little high. Um, I think that we'll be looking at more like something like this. Um, whereas, uh, it will, the independent characters are already going on the secondary market for about 25 bucks, 25 to $30. Um, with squads fetching around, uh, 35, Forty dollars, depending on which one. The Terminators probably go for more. The Stern Guard probably go for more. Maybe the Gants. The Gants. I don't know. It's it's really hard to say because we're kind of going into a, a new, a, a truly new edition. To be quite honest, more of a almost like a Sigmar hybrid. Um, judging from a lot of the data sheets and the uh, the way they they categorize things, right? So that's just something to really keep in mind. These are all easy to build. These are all push fit models, and for the most part, I actually prefer them to put together um, compared to other stuff, to be quite honest with you. Confused yet? Great. <laughs> there's real money and there's GW money. That's, uh, that's all you got to keep in mind. Your real money is what you pay and what the value you get is basically what is GW money, right? I think that's the easiest way to explain it. Well, would some, somebody else leave a comment. Like, I'm not a moneyologist. I don't know how this stuff works. So the new Leviathan box is a, is a very chonky boy. Um, it is, it's thick. Um, that's a good, that's a good solid three, three and a half inches right there for sure. I'm pretty much an expert on those, uh, those dimensions. And this is, you know, it is the nice st card stock, very heavy card stock. You can use this for storage and stuff uh, down the road for sure. But what I did want to mention is they're really starting to get away. And we saw this first with the Agassiz box. They're using little plastic seals. And as you're going to see in here, the rule book isn't even sealed. There's, there's a very less amount of plastic. I don't know if that was English. There, there isn't as big of amount of plastic maybe as an attempt to kind of get away from, you know, using as much plastic because it's just bad. It's just bad in general. So here's all the contents that you've seen in a really cool uh, laid out fashion. I think we've seen the promotional stuff. Leviathan box here, your cards, um, the decal sheet, which has most of the majority, uh, most of the major chapters on it and things like that. And they kind of break it all down. It's obviously made in the UK as we talk about. Don't ask me why in 2013, Games Workshop took all of their manufacturing capability out of the States, floated it back over, set up shop in the UK. And they're like, yeah, we're just gonna do it all in the UK. Five years previous, they moved all of it from Baltimore, Maryland to Memphis. I couldn't even tell you what the costs are on doing that, but you know, good luck finding that in a financial report, right? So got the nice little uh, poster. This is legal size. You can get 11 by 17 frame. Um, and if it isn't all kind of well tagged, um, you can have some fun and, you know, have that on display in your, your Beats Lab, so to speak. So here's all the screws. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But most one thing to note is that the, the weapons on the Dreadnought are separate. So in theory, they could 
put out another dreadnought with another set of weapons um, down the road and I guess not maybe because the rocket pods on here but if they did a different variant like an auto cannon or something or double daca or auto cannons from like back in the day that would be um, pretty easy to do and a lot cheaper than developing the multi-part kit and such all right and then getting into here we have lost a piece so I'm gonna gently put that over there i don't know what that goes to but peace down peace down that is uh that is no good okay uh and then it gets into the bottom here so the rule book itself is snugly packed into here which is good and the reason i'm mentioning this is because again it doesn't come wrapped in plastic as kind of like them getting away from that um which i definitely agree with and then here's your uh fate of the fate of the world card here there's a specific code on the back of this one so that you can play in their campaign and figure out who gets their stuff released first or their preview release first i think it was their stuff release first too so they have this just little card thing here and you just slide this out and boom you get to look at the the rule book, which I'm sure people have already gone page to page for that. So we're not going to waste a bunch of time on it, except for to say that this does look like a very good quality rule book. And let me open it up here. Um, yeah, it seems it seems pretty solid, like, you know, pretty, pretty well laid out, as you would expect. It's got a little bookmark thing right there. Lots of uh, lots of good current events information in here about what's going on in the campaigns and things so that's nice we'll definitely keep that one uh to read and when i don't want to get the uh, uh the core rulebook download we've got some instructions here which we'll check out in a second and then all the accoutrement the bases are in this flap and all of the cards and things are over here and some of these looks like oh no these are tarot okay oh these are all are these all tarot size oh dang okay so these are all tarot card t-a-r-o-t uh, tarot card size so if you're looking for and these already popped out of the the thing here um so you got some objective markers in the back so we've seen this format before which isn't isn't too much of a so the different mission types the gambits oh all the stuff in here cool so mission rules you got your primaries you got your secondaries and they have different backers so that would be easy to keep track of and how to play games. Oh, this is just like that that other only war deck they did. Okay, cool. Well, this is neat. And that's really good that they included that in this. So there's even more of a value because these things used to go for like 35 bucks when they put them out, give or take. Um, so to see it included in here and you don't have to buy it as a separate thing is really cool. Um, so I like how they have the free downloads for all the different things as well uh, currently, which I think is a huge, um, huge boon at this point in time, because let's face it, it's 2023. Everybody's got an app. Everybody's got an army builder, a download, a free download or something like that. Uh, let's jump into the instructions real, real quick too, because I think it's important to start there and then jump into the sprues and then we'll look at some finished models. So diving into the rule book here i did want to mention that this is probably the first time we've seen one of these starters come with all of the sprues basically split up by squad um, in the past the squads have been kind of like this jigsaw puzzle of guys go over here with this squad and this squad but just looking at this it looks like the leapers are here the gants are here and there's two sprues of those uh, the bard guys are here uh, mr mouth is here and then you've got a uh, big uh, big screamer killer guy over here <coughs> excuse me apparently i've been talking too much uh, and then up here you've got what looks to be the stern guard set the terminator separate the dreadnought separate which even uh the weapon like i said is is almost completely separate there uh, you've got uh the guys with the flamers and then or the inferno squad whatever they're called you've got uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. What's his face here? Did they put the Tyranids in the wrong spot? Oh, so that's that. That's the Prime. So there's the Librarian, the Prime, and the Terminator Captain. I guess it doesn't super matter unless their parts are intermingled there, which would be interesting. So in theory, they could release any one of these things as standalone kits now, which is something we hadn't seen in the past. In a lot of cases, some of the sprues would be separate, but like like i showed you with the you know the dudes of the banners the chapter ancients whatever those things were that we already showed you on here those 
they would just have to sell the whole sprue because there was nothing else on it. But now these are all basically by squads. So in theory, they could release all of these as the separate box set as well for those squads, which would make this, you know, significant savings, of course. Now, jumping into the instructions, uh, you know, some people hear push fit. And I like push fit. I think push fit's always good. And remember, you can always cut off the nubs and the little pegs or the holes in the pegs and just kind of glue it together. It'll still fit together. In a lot of cases, those or just, you know, clip off the peg because then that way there's no pushback and it doesn't kind of stick out and you can get a good seal. But what I'm seeing on these Terminators is these arms are separate. So you can just snip off those little diagonals, right? And you would be able to put any arm on there you want or any swap anything out. Um, while the, um, the shoulder pads are not separate, you could still get 3D printed or bits, the little convex or concave, whichever one it is, it escapes me at the moment, uh, symbols and put on there for your chapter and you're good to go. And there's a nice scenic base. It's got two tactical rocks right there. Librarian, same deal. There's a little bit more assembly to them. But once you get them up to this point, it looks like the arm is part of it over here. But his other arm, it has a separate shoulder pad. So you could even, well, that's the one with the librarian or the terminal. Yeah, the crux. Uh, that's got the crux on it. So, well, this shoulder pad is separate over here. So you could have some real fun with that. Uh, but you're not going to be able to get that arm off of there because it looks like it is a separate slice for the uh, the four sacks and then getting into all the other stuff you know it's going to be very similar to what we've seen but it isn't the super multi-part with the primaris guys where you got to put the you know the front uh of the shin and you know it's just it, it's a lot of parts in a lot of cases i personally like this guy right here i actually didn't see him where is he at on these sprues huh he might be mixed into one of these squads i bet because I didn't see him as a separate sprue, but that is a mystery we're about to unravel at some point here. So I don't see him as part of that, but uh, just kind of working through it, the Terminators, which I'm most excited about, uh, look to be separate arms as well. So you could have some fun with that, doing all the posing. Obviously they're a bit bigger than the older ones. And then the Stern Guard, also look like you can swap out the arms and the pads. Not necessarily, oh yeah, it looks like the heads on some of them. Yep, some of the heads are definitely gonna be swappable. So there's definitely some room for customization. So not only are these easy to build and push fit, but they're definitely gonna have a lot of customization between the arms and the heads, which I definitely like to see. Um, and then you've got this little teleport homer here. Is, does any of these have two? Oh yeah, the, sar the sergeant has two different heads. That's cool. And then you got the Infernus Squad, which looks to also kind of be sl more slices than anything, but you could get a couple of separate arms off there, but you don't, I don't think you're gonna, you're not gonna wanna, you just, just get some 3D printed bits and put them on here, I feel like at that point. All right, and then you've got the Dreadnought. And the Dreadnought, this is, this is interesting. So it's got a little bit of a T, uh, T-bar here, which we've done that in the past for uh, nights to actually create that with a little bit of sprue with the nub that comes up through the bottom. Um, but it looks like they already built that into this kit. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say you're going to glue that down, but none of these really require glue, hopefully, which we're about to find out. Um, and it looks like these notches are the same. I'd be interested to find out if the, you can put any of the Terminator weapons on there, or excuse me, the uh, dreadnought weapons on there. That's the easiest uh, <laughs> uh, dreadnought weapon assembly I've ever seen. Okay, so there it is. And of course, you know, all the data cards, but the, are the data cards in there? No, the data cards aren't in here. These are the rules. Um, jumping into the Tyranids, it looks like there's a lot of slices and not as much, obviously, they're Tyranids. So what are you going to customize, right? Uh, so these guys are all going to be built about the same way it's looking like. Uh, the Carnifex does not have any uh, different head options. It looks like you just get the Screamer Killer or you get the Screamer Killer. But they have a lots of little fiddly bits, little pinions and things on their, their feet or hooves. The Von Ryan's Leapers look to be pretty straightforward with the left and right halves of the body. And then the legs go on there and uh, some slice, uh, some slice and things. And then getting to the Termagants. They look pretty interesting. Like you probably remember the old Termagants, which were basically push fit for the time. They look to be very similar to that with some different front arms and guns. And then you've got the Rippers, which look a lot more 
a lot cooler because they've got all the flat bases there so you can make little groups of them they looks like they glue together so i don't know i feel like those i'd probably want to put three on a base but they're meant to obviously be two to a base and then the neurogaunts look to be very, very similar halves wise like the termagants barb gaunts uh, also look to be very similar but let more of a left and right half where you just have to make maybe a random leg sticks on there they look to be very easy to build very very easy easier to build i suppose and then you've got the big old psychophage mr mouth as i like to call him left and right half he's gonna be primarily hollow uh don't forget that little tongue bit in the middle there you'll be sorry and then uh, we're gonna just have to pop it apart again because you didn't glue it down obviously and you got these exterior bits that are going to sock it in for his legs. Remember, Tyranids are technically a hexapod, so they're always generally going to have six appendages. Um, and there's all the rules for them, but we've already seen all that. And boom, there's the instructions. Let's take a closer look at the sprues and then get to the building. We'll try to blow through these as quick as possible, but... Uh... There is a lot of sprues in here, which is really dope. <laughs> okay, so here's the Termin or here's the, why do I keep calling them Terminate? Here's the Dreadnought <laughs> uh, sprue right here. And this seems a lot more detailed, although you can see the, the pegs and the push fit areas, um, than the one that they put out way back in 2017. And then here's the weapon uh, one right here um, that it, just eyeballing it, and we're, we'll definitely compare it here in a minute. Um, I think those are the same the same size as the, uh, the ones for uh, the current dreadnought. Let's just keep going with Space Marines. So here is one half, or actually I think these might, weren't these the times two? Yeah, so these this is the Inferno Squad. So this one's gonna be basically the top where you're not gonna see any of those push fit parts except for perhaps the backpacks. And then on the back there, they all will completely socket together. But these look like very, very, I would say much more pronounced socket and, and peg system there than what we've seen in the past. Um, because, you know, with the Warcry, or not Warcry, the Warhammer Underworld stuff, it's been a little varied on, on how well they went together. Um, and I think, you know, I think there's some, some criticism, and it looks like uh, GW has definitely taken a lot of that to heart, uh, which is really cool. Let's keep going. Let's get the Terminators. Oh, I didn't realize these would be as small. Of a... Oh, these are special characters. Okay, so here's the Librarian. Um, and just oogling his goodies here. Let's see what we got. So that shoulder pad is badass. And then, wow, that looks really cool, that whole area there. And yes, you won't be able to unsee it now, but he's got psychic nips. That's right, psychic nips. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, doesn't come with a helmeted head option, though, unfortunately, boo. Uh, but he does have a little um, skull that you can put on his base. So there's all that. And then next up, we got the Terminator Captain. Still don't know where that... Uh, that other guy is the lieutenant. Um, this guy looks pretty cool. Very, wait, nope, I'm a liar. This is not, so this is, huh, what's going on here? What's going on here? Okay, so this is the Terminator squad. So that was just the end of the Terminator squad. So again, you got the, the top where you're not gonna re really be able to tell these are push face except for a couple of little spots right there, teleport homer. Um, definitely bigger, holy cow, they're Primaris size. Where's my, where's my test, where's my stunt Primaris? Let me grab him, the one we painted with speed paint. So yeah, those, those are definitely bigger. I'm liking it, I'm liking it, I'm digging it. Um, What else we got? I don't really see anything else that's noteworthy on this one. So then, of course, this is the other half, so the other duder. Uh, yep, pretty, just bigger dudes. I think we've, we've seen a lot of those guys already. Let's put this down, down, down. Um, and then we've got more Tyranids, and then we've got these guys. So what are these guys? So there's a Tyranid Prime, and he's actually attached to this. So I'm wondering if they're going to come out with a game or something like that where you get both of these, and they're, they're fighting each other. Actually, no, I can't really think of anything yet. But yes, so this Terminator Captain looks badass. He's got a ginormous sword that's very cool looking. He looks almost bigger than the other guys for sure. I think he is. Yeah, he's definitely bigger than the other Terminators. And that base is... Fucking chef kiss. Look at that thing. That's, whew, that is a base. Y'all call that a base? This is a base. I don't even know what, what, is that a screamer killer you killed? I wonder if it is. It is a screamer killer. Holy cow. Well, he's stepping on a screamer killer right there. 
And you got the uh, Tiernid Prime over there. Looks very fresh as well. And then last but certainly not least, you've got the Stern Guard Squad. Oh, and the Biologist. So the Apothecary is on here. The Lieutenant's on the sprue right here. So there's a lieutenant. So this is gonna be one of those ones that they uh, eventually sell as like a squad for like whatever. So you've got what, five dudes? So those are, uh, I guess that's a that's a five man squad. So maybe they would value that at 15 bucks each. And then, or 15 bucks. So then you got two special characters there. So that's like what, 20-ish dollars. So you're looking at maybe with inflation, maybe around 75 bucks for the sprue if they do put it out separately, I suppose. They could, they certainly could. Um, and then you got the Stern Guard over here, which look great. Got their ginormous, uh, lead bigger weapons. It doesn't look like they have different, I thought they had, oh, okay. Yeah, they did have an ammo box, but I guess not, combi. And then there's the, oh, that's the Lieutenant. So it looks like the Lieutenant's isolated to like this area right here. And you got the biologist over here, and then they're kind of surrounded a bit. I don't know. It looks like he goes up there too. I don't know. We'll have to. I'll have to come up with a key for this one. But it looks cool. I'm glad we discovered that one because I was like, where is he? Um, and then here's the leaper sprue. It looks very detailed. Lots and lots of small parts right there. So they're definitely getting smaller. Screamer killer is ginormous. So there's half of it. Look at look at how big this guy is. I think just up to there was how big the old Screamer Killer was. Oh, and it's got the Neurogon on here. So this will probably be the one that they sell separately as well for some sort of uh, price tag. Maybe maybe this one will go for 75 too. Who knows when they do eventually sell it separately. Uh, so you got that. And then you've got Mr. Mouth. Here's Mr. Mouth. He's not a whole lot of parts, but, uh, but yeah. He's, there's his legs, different legs, that little tongue piece to put in there. That's deceptively... A very small, a very big model to be on such a small sprue. And then we've got the Gaunts, or which Gaunts are these? I don't know, Bar Gaunts? These are the Bar Gaunts, I think. Are the Psycho Gaunts? No. Where's the Bar Gaunts? I don't know, they're a Gaunt, who cares? Looks like the Gaunts here. So these are the Termagants. Oh, I guess they're both on that screw. Yeah, okay. So both of, both of the new Barbed and Psycho Gaunts, there's some more Psyche Gaunts around there. And then here's the Termagants. Uh, and these guys, they, they okay, so they look about the same size mass-wise as the current Termagant, but they're just, they're not as thick. Like, they actually look, you know, scary and predatory and, and like, sinewy and, and things like that. So that I get. That's really cool to see. It'd be nice to see what the Hormigons uh, are going to look like because these guys are these guys are basically everything everybody wanted back in 2005 or whatever when they put out the current kit uh, for those. So that's that's really neat to see. Okay, so I think that's I think that's everything sprue wise. So now the fun begins and we get to put all of these together, well at least one of each, to show you. Uh, and give you our closing thoughts, and then uh, we'll get on out of here and let you enjoy your box set. Hopefully, if you uh, you know, well, can find one. So I, I, I bought myself a bit of a treat because uh, <laughs> I knew this project was coming up. This is the uh, God Hand Clippers. Now these aren't like the same as the Tamios or anything like that out there that are like 50, 60 bucks and just ridiculous. These actually are, are, are shockingly affordable. I think they're like 12 or 16 bucks on Amazon when I bought them a few weeks back. Um, and they are just, they are amazing. I mean, for what they are at this at this point in time and you know, 2023 20, with all the inflation and everything, uh, they're just a really good set of clippers and they cut very smooth very concise you can get in right here next to parts and it and it won't jack up your sprues or anything like that it basically cuts through everything like butter i've been using these for a few weeks just in, in preparation but i do want to mention that you know i'll put the the amazon link um in the description and obviously in the comments for you guys to check out because i think they're probably for the money the literal best pair of clippers i have ever purchased and obviously these are only for plastic but 
uh, while you're waiting on your Leviathan box to get there, you might want to pick these up off Amazon because it'll make your job. Because uh, I was using these <laughs> and I was like, why am I using these? Because shit just flies everywhere. See what I mean? When I use these, uh, here, dramatic, uh, dramatic comparison. Oh, it didn't go. It just dropped down right there where it should have gone. Um, but remember, if you're going into like some tight areas where you think you might break apart or something like that, uh, you can always use a little bit of blue tack to get in there to hold the piece together while you get it clipped off the sprue. That's always a good idea too. I do that a lot. I keep a little piece of blue tack right here on top of my <laughs> my hobby light. So uh, just a quick heads up as we get building these. I definitely wanted to um, rope you in on that one. Kicking off this uh, section of show and tell here, we've got Mr. Dready Dread. So this one is, I mean, most of the push fit stuff goes together great. The only complaint I have, honestly, uh, the designs are good, but you almost push too hard. Like some of the um, Tyranid stuff, you, you'll push and you, you might uh, break it as, you, as it snaps over another claw or something like that. Now this guy here, I think you really should glue. Like this is... This probably isn't going to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't even turn. But what I really like about this, and unfortunately, these don't zzz, zzz either. But this, remember how I was saying, hey, that looks familiar. Uh, it actually is perfect for uh, the other Redemptor weapons. So if you got Brutalis weapons or you got just the uh, the normal uh, Redemptor from 2017, it will all attach to this guy right here. But like I said... I definitely recommend uh, gluing him at the waist because that um, that little area right there is going to be a bit problematic because the first time you grab it went wrong, uh, he's going to shear in half, I feel like. Uh, so, well, there is that, I suppose. Um, and then taking a look at... Oh, and also he stands a bit taller than the normal Dreadnought right here just because he looks like he's standing on, you know, got his foot up. But once you get all the armor plates on here, it is roughly about the same size roughly roughly give or take so i don't know i think it's i think it's really cool regardless um the captain is bananas cool it reminds me of some of the forge roll kits we've seen out there in the past uh and the fact that you know you can swap some of these parts out i think we're going to see a lot of these uh converted and used for different things actually we're already seeing these converted and painted up for a lot of different things uh the stern guard guy just put a basic one together it goes together super quick very uh very easy um, and then there's a comparison to, uh, the normal one we painted up when the speed paint first came out. And then you've got the Infernus dude, uh, which also looks great. And like I said, it isn't as customizable, but I think as far as, you know, just some dude that you might need for a squad, it's, it's spot on. I mean, this, this, this box is money, um, for more, more reasons than one. And then you've got the Terminator, uh, this is the captain. So or sergeant so you can have a head swap on that guy and then you know it's definitely pretty good sized i'm very very happy with um uh the way this one came out uh size wise and then my personal favorite out of all of them is the lieutenant here that's just a baller this dude's like yo i've been stuck on this planet i know how to kill these bitches <laughs> like, like i got some blades i'm really good at it like guys come here uh, stay with me if you want to survive and but he is on a 40 mil base because he is a character but he's looking pretty fresh as well then we get to the librarian librarian we got this nice fresh librarian here and he's looking good for sure um i really like the posing on this and i think we're going to see a lot of these guys on the tabletop and you can um mess with the head but you just want to be really careful in there and then you've got the the new apothecary, which I think people are just going to use as the old apothecary. Am I right? Because why not at that point? Um, you could just maybe switch out the arm or something like that. Um, I did want to mention, and I didn't have it. I didn't do it. That wow stick we've used. These are great for drilling out bolters because it's 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 got enough torque and it's just boop, and it's just zzz, like that, and it's got a small enough drill bits that it's just perfect to get in there, and you don't have to worry about thrashing the uh, the hole there. As uh, I mean, we definitely seen. Uh, many of those and then screamer killer well this guy looks super dope very much looks like the predator himself you just want to be careful putting this on right here now if you use glue you'd be able to kind of squish that together but that isn't where we're at today but this guy is on a 90 mil base i believe i believe it's a 90 mil let's see 
Are they both 100 meters? Oh, maybe it's 100. I forget. It said in instructions, so just go back to that spot. I thought it was a 90 mil. Maybe I'm actually not sure now. Uh, but regardless, it looks great. I mean, this is a really cool pose, and he is pretty ginormous. But for him, I think he got shot down by the Terminator with the assault cannon in the in the video there, which is a little sad. And then this guy, I like how he looks, and I like you know he looks just bigger like in the video because yeah, he's bigger than the than the librarian, right? Because like, bzz, bzz, bzz. but um, I just thought he would be bigger in general. And then here's his two little little brain bugs that definitely look like the OG Zoanthrope from uh, back in the '90s. Uh, so this guy's cool, and I mean, this is how they compare. You know, I just I just figured he'd be bigger. I mean, I don't feel like it's misleading or anything. Like GW put the pictures out there, like everybody saw it. And then the Tyranid Prime, he's obviously a little bit sm smaller than um, you know the the Harpy or the Shrike. Uh, he's on a fifty, I believe. Yeah, it looks like he's on a fifty. So he's got a cool pose. I was a little uh, I, I wasn't sure about him with the with these wings down, like the Maw Crusher. Like they always seem to never want to do the outstretched wing thing, and that would have been cool to, th to see. I, I feel like it's a little missed opportunity. Uh, personally, but eh, it is what it is, I suppose. And then you've got the Termagant, which these are guys that are on a 28 mil base. And you want to be careful here because this is one where I pushed a little too much and the claw went past the other claw right there. So you're going to, you know, be gentle with these guys if you can because if you're just in there mashing the, the things together, like, oh, it's just push fit. Well, you, you might have some problems. Same thing here with the tentacles on the Von Ryan's Leaper. Had a little uh, issue with that, but, um, you know, it just sockets in pretty well. And there's a little bit of movement depending on how you want to do it. But I really like I really like this guy, too. Uh, I wish he was a lictor um, because, you know, when we I don't have it handy, but we showed you some of the Puppet Sword Tyranids. Uh, the, the lictor they did for that was just phenomenal posing. But obviously, he's a stealth bug, but whatever. You get what I'm saying. So overall, you know, um, I think I think the models themselves, uh, they go together like a dream with a little careful planning and uh, caution assembling them. And the, the poses overall are great. And the fact that um, the assembly is, is, is easy. I mean, th these guys go together super, super quick.